Thank you, Mr. Dale. Uh, in all honesty, I've probably been a Will Hall groupie all his life. Uh, Will's mother and, and my wife worked together many, many years ago. And so we followed Amory football. And uh, we went to most Amory football games for a two or three year period stretch. And I have never seen Will Hall lose a game. For two years, he won every game we've watched, including the state championship. Right after that, he left and went to uh, his career at Northwest Community College, set all kind of records. And uh, as a quarterback, you know, just he did an outstanding job. So right after he finished with that, he got uh, drafted. On, and since he was a free agent at that point, not really, but he was a scholarship athlete. He went to the University, University of North Alabama. And he won the equivalent of the Heisman Trophy, the Harlan Hill Trophy at the University of North Alabama. Strong, strong, uh, powerful uh, award. And, and, and so he, and that's just from what he's done in his past. He, not only that, you, you kind of get around a young man and you, and you watch him and it's so much fun to watch him grow up because you know they're going places. Uh, and, and really, when he, he stepped out there and took the fire ants to a, of course, his dad was coaching the fire ants. When he took the fire ants to a uh, playoff game, which we didn't ever think was possible, uh, outstanding job with that. But then he went on and he coached at uh, University of West Alabama for three years and then coached at University of North uh, West Georgia at West Georgia. He went to the national playoffs two straight years and finished fourth. And with one field goal, he would have probably been a national champion. That's a coaching career that's already started so far. He, he's left there and, and served at the uh, University of Memphis uh, as offensive, no, tight ends coach, I think it was. And then he went to Tulane University, just finished with Tulane as the offensive coordinator. That was exciting to watch his games on Saturday. I would sneak over there and watch as many of them as I possibly could. And, uh, and now he is now the head coach, University of Southern Mississippi. And I'm expecting great things from Will Hall. Will Hall, come on up and share with us what you can. All right, excited to be with you guys today. I may move around a little bit. Can everybody hear me if I talk good? Everybody's good. All right, I, I usually don't have a lot of trouble being heard. But, but like Raymond said, I grew up all over the state of Mississippi. A lot of you know my dad, Bobby Hall. Uh, you know, my whole family is from Prentice County. Basically, my dad grew up in Guntown. My mom grew up in Baldwin. They're both Baldwin graduates. And uh, But I grew up all over the state, moved all over the state with my dad, the high school coach. And uh, like Raymond said, graduated from Amory, uh, married a – you can go ahead and go to the next slide. I'm going to talk a little bit today. I'm just going to give you a little bit of, about me. But uh, I played at North Alabama, played at Northwest Community College and got right into coaching. I played Division II ball, so I started coaching Division II ball. And uh, like a lot of you in here, all right, when, when you're 25 years old, you've got everything figured out, that's what I was, okay? <laughs> I was a way better coach at 25 than what I am right now, all right? I had it all figured out. I wanted to go, I wanted to call plays and run a program as soon as I could. I didn't need any help. I just needed I just needed opportunity, baby. I had it all figured out. So I took every job you could possibly imagine that nobody else wanted just so I could call plays. And you can't really see it because it's small, but I went to – these are going to be some, some football powerhouses, if it's the name for you right here. <laughs> right, Presbyterian College in Clinton, South Carolina, 24 years old. I was calling plays there. Then I went to Southwest Baptist University in Bolivar, Missouri for two years and, and called offenses there. Then I went to Monticello, Arkansas, okay, for one year. And I'm going to stop right there to say this. So I married a girl named Rebecca. She's Rebecca Hall now, but uh, Rebecca Randall's her name. Some of you probably know her grandfather, Pete Randall, uh, great American, ran the officials and everything around here. Her mom and dad are David and Renee Randall. Renee ran the math department at Obama Community College for a long time. But anyway, we've been married, and, and her family's all from Amory, Mississippi. Nobody's moved, nobody's left until recently, okay? So we get married. We're about to get married December of 04. She's graduating Ole Miss. I've been coaching for one year at Presbyterian College. All right, I'm going to say this just to tell you what all she's been through to get to this point. So we're two weeks from getting married on December 18th, and I come home, and I say, babe, Fired up about getting married in two more weeks. Still going to coach, still rolling, but we ain't going to go to Clinton, South Carolina. We're going to go to this great,
great place. It's Arkadelphia, Arkansas. You're going to love it. All right. Henderson State University. So we do that for five months. Come in, babe. Got us another better opportunity. Going to go to Bolivar, Missouri. All right. Again, her family's never moved from Maine. We go up to Bolivar, Missouri for 18 months. Then we go to Monticello, Arkansas for 11 months. All right. Monticello had gone one in 10 two years in a row and was last in the conference in offense for two years in a row. We won four games in our first year and led the conference in rushing and, and uh, third down percentage and had some really broke a lot of school records. And that's when I got my first big break in coaching. All right. A guy by the name of Bobby Wallace offered me to be the offensive coordinator at West Alabama. And for those of you who don't know, Bobby Wallace is a legend. Bobby Wallace signed Bo Jackson at Auburn. Bobby Wallace had won three national titles at North Alabama in the mid 90s. And he's just a great human being. He just recently retired as the AD at West Alabama. But Coach Wallace comes in and offers me the offensive coordinator job at West Alabama. So it's my first chance to really go work for a legend. And uh, now, but rewind back to Rebecca. All right, this is 07. We've been married three years. She is seven months pregnant with our first child. We got we got the nursery made. I mean, it's immaculate. It's beautiful. We come in. Got two more months to go for having this babe. Great opportunity. We fixed to move to Livingston, Alabama. They got a town of 3,000 people with no Walmart, but I'm telling you, it's going to be awesome. All right. All right. So that's what we did. We packed up the two months left. We went to Livingston, Alabama, and uh, just had an unbelievable run there. They had, uh, you know, they had never won a conference title uh, outright. They had never hosted a playoff game. And uh, in three years as offensive coordinator there, we went to our first playoff game. And then Coach Wallace retired, and I was able to become the head coach there at age 30. And uh, we ended up uh, winning the first outright conference title. We won – back-to-back -back conference titles for the first time in school history. And uh, at that time, my oldest son, who I was talking about we were about to have, he was five, He was becoming five years old. So he, uh, you know, it's funny how the Lord provides. He He's on the autism spectrum. Now, he's very highly functioning. He's a good boy, but he struggles a little bit in school and needs some help. And there ain't a lot of good places to go to school in Livingston, Alabama, okay? And uh, not a lot of help he could receive. And West Georgia comes along in Carrollton, Georgia, which is a phenomenal town, very similar to Tupelo. A lot of things to do, a lot of resources. So we go to West Georgia. They had won 23 games in six years when we got there. All right, we won 24 in our first two. All right, it was just a great turnaround. We're able to go to two semifinals and, uh, and really get that thing rolling. It's a great experience. But I always wanted to coach Division One ball. Grew up, you know, watching my dad coach high school ball. Knew when I was a young kid, I wanted to be a Division One football coach. That was my goal ever, ever since I was a young child. And uh, it, it became apparent to me to get an opportunity to coach Division One. I had to go get some Division One experience. So, so left being a head coach and and went to Louisiana Lafayette for a year as the offensive coordinator with Mark Hudspeth. Some of you may know uh, from Louisville, and then went to Memphis for a year. And then the last two years, I was at Tulane in New Orleans. As the offensive coordinator there, we were able to go to back-to-back -to -back bowl games. Uh, they've actually gone to three straight bowl games now for the first time in school history. We had the second-best offense in school history. And uh, it was just an unbelievable blessing to be down there. And that got us this job at Southern Miss. So that's kind of me. I've got two kids, two boys, 13 and 10, Tripp and Pete. Tripp's named after me and my dad. And then Pete's named after his granddaddy, who I just told you about, Pete Randall, who's an Amory legend. So uh, excited to be here. This is our third time. I say our, my wife, as you know, my wife's as much involved in this as me. It's our third time to take over a program, and we're excited to be taking over Southern Miss. I know this is North Mississippi. I understand the fact that not everybody gets to come all the way down to Hattiesburg much. It ain't as bad a drive as it used to be. All right? It took me three hours and 15 minutes this morning. All right? It's 45 to Meridian, 59, boom, you're in Hattiesburg. All right? One good phone call, and you knock out half of it. All right, so uh, <laughs> so look, uh, Southern Miss is a place, for those of you that don't know, has an unbelievable rich and story tradition in football. All right, I mean, we got eight conference titles. We played in 22 bowl games. By winning percentage, we're the, we're the winningest FBS football program in the state of Mississippi. We've got great talent all around us, um, and, and we've got really good facilities for our level. There is no reason why we can't be what we once were, which is the best group of five football program in, the, in, in this country. 
And uh, we got to get back to doing what works there, and that's what we're going to do. And that's recruiting Mississippi kids. Okay, if you, those of you that keep up with us know we signed some really good players from Mississippi this year. We signed the Gatorade Player of the Year from Taylorsville and Ty Keys. We signed some good kids from North Mississippi, uh, and we've got some that are committed to us right now. <clears throat> We're going to get back to doing that, recruiting Lower Alabama and Southeast Louisiana. But we want to build a program that Mississippi can be proud of. I'm Mississippi through and through. All right, and, and that's what I want to tell you today. I want to talk to you about what we're building, all right, and why. If you're on the fence, why you ought to just be in with us? Because we're going to build something you can be proud of, all right? If you come in here today as an Ole Miss fan or a state fan or whatever, I ain't telling you to leave them. I'm just telling you, start keeping up with us, too, because what we're finna build is something that you're going to be really proud of. If you would, go to the next slide. This is our culture pyramid. I'm going to talk through it and explain it because it's small where you can't see it. But this is up in every building in our whole, every meeting room in our whole building. So it's in the weight room. It's in the team room. It's in every position room. It's in every coach's office. It's in the intro when you walk into the lobby. It's everything we're trying to build. At the bottom right here is our core values. That's the foundation of our program. We've got six of them. I'm going to go through. Above that is our mission statement. All right? And that is more for our staff. How I want our staff, my mission statement for our staff, and how I want them to affect a kid when he comes into our program. Right above that is our vision. What do we want this program to look like overall? And above that is kind of our battle cry and our slogan. All right? But I'm going to start right here at the bottom with our core values. We've got six of them. This is what we want a Southern Miss football player to act like. To, and, and how we want him to represent us when he's out on campus, when he's out in the community, when you run into one. This is what we want you to see these six values in him. We're building it every day. We've had an unbelievable semester, and we put this in place, and, uh, and it's going really well. But number one core value is honesty, okay, which is pretty simple. But it's about you just being lost right now. I'll let you know. I have an honesty simple, right? Tell the truth and do it all the time, okay? And it's got to be brutal. We tell our young men, we will be brutally honest with you. We will tell you the truth even when it's not what you want to hear. Okay? We tell our young men that if you tell the truth, your problems become a part of your past. But if you lie, you're eventually going to have to deal with them in the future. It's probably going to get worse. All right? So that's something we preach and talk about all the time. Our second core value is accountability. All right, which is also simple for all of you in here, but it's also something that's being lost right now. Accountability, right? Do your job, handle your responsibilities. All right, we want to teach our young men that good decisions lead to good consequences and bad decisions lead to bad consequences. That's just the way it is. All right, and uh, we, we, we live in a day and age where young men are going out in the world and they don't want to accept accountability for their actions. They, we, we, we have a little term we say in our program, BCD. We say no BCD ever. BCD stands for blame, complain, defend. All right? We know there's young men all out in the world right now that do something wrong. They want to blame others for their, for, for their decision. They want to complain about their circumstances. Or they want to defend their bad decision through who they were hanging out with or whatever. Uh -uh. You're responsible for your decisions, and good decisions lead to good consequences. Number three is the golden rule. All right, which is simple for all of you in here. I'm a Christian. That matters to me. All right, that's the way I was raised. I'm not the type of human that forces my beliefs on others, but at the same point, our players are going to always know where my center point comes from and why I'm able to be such a positive person all the time. But the golden rule is simple, right? Treat others the way you want to be treated. That's how we define a good person in the Southern Miss football program. Somebody that treats others the way he would want to be treated. All right. The good Lord didn't tell us to treat somebody good if they make a lot of money or treat somebody good if they're from the same part of the world as you or treat somebody good if they got the same skin color as you. He said, treat everybody the way you would want to be treated. And that's got to start with me all the way down through the very base of our program. All right. And it's something we believe in. Number four is always compete. We're big on competition here. And competition is viewed as a negative word a lot nowadays, right? I got two kids that play Little League Baseball, okay? We went to a tournament this weekend. We got our butt smoked. We didn't win a game. And you know what happened? They got a freaking ring. <laughs> <laughs> We're getting back in the car, and I'm like, Pete, man, what is that? He said, we got a ring, Dad, finishing third. I said, dude, there wasn't three teams in the game. <laughs> But that's what we're 
we're doing right now, right? Everybody knows that. And so all of a sudden, competition becomes a negative word. We want to train our young men that competition is a positive word. Competition helps push you to be a better version of yourself. Okay? you got to wake up every day and compete with yourself and everybody around you to be the best you can be. Because when you get out in the real world, all right, and people are interviewing and hiring, they ain't going to say, you know what, Johnny, tell you what, man, that was a terrible interview, but we'll give you Johnny. You know what I mean? That just ain't the way it goes. All right? It just ain't the way it goes. All right? So we compete in everything we do, from the weight room to academics to drills and practice. And we train our guys that you ought to embrace. We tell them right now, hey, we're going to wake up tomorrow. We're going to try to recruit somebody that's going to beat you out. All right? That's the way the real world works. All right? Number five is project positive energy. I'm big on projected positive energy. Those of you that know me and know me for a long time know I'm all about that. Uh, we tell our young men it takes the exact same amount of energy to lift someone up and make their day better as it does to be ugly to them and bring them down. Okay? All right? We Everybody knows. You, you, you've all been around that person that can wake up, and it can be sunny and 79 degrees outside. You run into them like, oh, I tell you what, it just ain't raining in five days. <laughs> you know what I mean? Nobody wants to be around that person. We don't want a Southern Miss football player to be that way. We want to lift others up and to make the world a better place. We want to impact people one person at a time. That's what we tell our young men all the time is that we can't change everybody, all right, all at once. But if everybody within our program can impact one person today in a positive way, that's 150 people impacted positively. We can look up in two years, we changed a whole heck of a lot of it. And we changed the way we're viewed, all right? So that's what we want right there. And the last core value, number six, is find a way. And guys, you know, everybody in here, ladies, in here, some days you wake up and you just don't feel good. Some days you wake up and you got a flat tire. And you still got to do what you're supposed to do anyway. And that's what we tell our young men that, you know, as you get older, everybody in here knows this. If you only get good work done on days where you feel really good, then you ain't going to get a whole lot of work done. Okay? All right? And that's what we tell our young men. And that's how we're training them. Some days you just got to hunker down and find a way to do what you're supposed to do because people are counting you. All right? So those are our six core values. Over the course of this first spring here, we've had highlight videos. We've had examples. We've had other people come in and talk on them. When a young man uh, does one of these, we point it out and celebrate them. When a young man doesn't do it, he gets called out, and we point that out as well. So we're laying that foundation and building it. For those of you that follow us on social media, uh, I think you've seen our players and the way they're acting is, is something to, to be commended and something we're proud of. All right, if you look right above that, it's our mission statement, okay? And this, again, is more for my staff and everybody that works for me and how they're going to touch these kids. We say we want to build a culture and environment to help these young men reach their full potential in four areas, and it's got to be equal, all four of them. Number one is academics. Number two is athletics. Number three is their character. And number four is their future. Okay? And that's what that, that block is right there, to help each player reach their full potential. Number one is academics. Okay? We want to help each player reach their full potential academically. We want to give them all the resources they could possibly need, and we tell them when we're recruiting them, to understand this, from the moment you walk into this program, you're going to be expected to get a degree. And your position coach is going to have a very active approach in that. Okay? If you've got a son that comes in place for me, he's never going to call home and say, Mama, I tell you what. Dad, I tell you what. I wish Coach Hall, my position coach, would put a little more into it. All right? He may call home and say, I tell you what, I wish Coach Hall would get off of me. Okay? But we're going to be on them, and we're going to force feed academics to them. Some of them love it, and it's easy. Some of them don't like it, and it's hard, but it's going to happen. Okay? And uh, we have an unbelievable academic center. We have tutors for them and, and all that that all Division One football programs have. And uh, to be honest with you, with how structured and organized we are, they ought to get tutors rooms while they're here. They really should. Number two is athletically. We want to build a structured environment for all players to be successful as, as, as football players. And if they're good enough, which is very rare, but if they're good enough, we want to give them the opportunity to continue playing at the next level. Okay, but we want to build a championship program and help them be involved in a program that can win and win big. Like I've told you before, 
Some of you know Southern Miss is one forever. Okay, and we got to get back to that, and we're going to. But uh, schematically, I'm not going to get into all that right now. But we want to have systems on offense, defense, and in the kicking game that transition over to the next level, the NFL, where if they're involved in our schemes, it helps them play at the next level. So if you watch us play, you're not going to see us. You're not going to see us under center running knots. It's not what they do at the next level. You're not going to see us. I hope I don't offend anybody here. You're not going to see us in the air raid. All right? That ain't what they do at the next level. You're going to see us running pro-style schemes that transition over to the next level, and I think that's important to do that for kids. Number three is character. As you can tell already, that's huge for me. Uh, we want to build a culture and environment to help these young men grow up to be real men, and I'm going to talk about that here in a minute. Uh, I, I think there's a, there's a leadership void right now in our country with young men growing out in it. I truly believe with everything I've got that young men being a part of our program is only going to help them be more prepared to be a better father, a husband, and a leader in their communities when they get done. And I think you can see already we're on on them about that. And then last but not least is their future. So many young men, whether you know it or not, they go play college football. And the only thing on their mind is I'm going to go play in the NFL. I'm going to play in the NFL. I'm going to play in the NFL. The fact of the matter is, think about this. We educate our guys on this. We have a meeting on this once every spring semester. If you're going to play running back in the NFL, Okay, there's 32 teams in the NFL. Every team keeps three running backs. So to be a running back in the NFL, you've got to be one of the 96 best running backs walking planet Earth at one particular moment in time. Okay, ain't very easy to do. So when you hear people talking about he's going to play in the NFL, look at him and say, ooh, he does, he's good. Okay, because it's very rare. And if you do make it, usually you don't make it very long. All right, so what we want to prepare our young men along the way is football will end probably way sooner than you expect it to. We've got to figure out what we want to do with our life and start transitioning into that so we've got a plan when it's over. We want to use every resource Southern Miss has to help them get started with their career when it's done. So that's our mission statement. If you go right up above that, this is our vision for our program, and this is me. This is what we're about. It's what we're trying to become, and it's real simple. All right, our vision for Southern Miss football. Somebody asked me today, said, Will, what do you hope's happen in five years, ten years? This is it, okay? We want to be the best group of five football program in America, and we want to develop real men. That's what we're trying to do every day, okay? We can be the best group of five football program in America. We've been that before. But along the way, we've got to develop real men. I think that's what the good Lord put me and us here to do. I think the world is void of real men right now. And what we tell our young men is this, a real man with real toughness, okay, that's not going into a bar and winning a bar fight. A real man with real toughness is how many times can you wake up and adversity hits you can things not be going your way and you still handle your responsibilities and your obligations for everybody that's counting on you, from your future wife to your future kids, all right, to your church members, to your team members, to your coworkers your mother, everybody that's counting on you. Can you get the job done? Can you do what you're supposed to do even on a day that ain't your day? Because that's what Amanda, that's what we do, right? That's what everybody here does. It. That's what I do, all right? And that's what we're training these young men to be. And I believe the world needs more of those right now, and I think our football program's going to help with that. And then last but not least, at the very top, is kind of our battle cry and our slogan. It's at the tip of the pyramid. Those of you that follow us on social media see our people tweet it out all the time. It's, it's AIE, and AIE stands for Attitude is Everything, only you get to choose yours. And I think it's the greatest gift the good Lord's given us is the ability to no matter what your circumstances are, where you're from, what your parents did, no matter what, you get to choose your attitude. You get to choose your response to every set of circumstances that come your way every day. It's easier for some than others. All right, some of us are born really blessed, some of us aren't. But, at the, at, but the people I'm dealing with, hey, man, you're in college. Most of you are on full scholarship. You've got a chance to do something really great with your life. All right, and understanding it's a powerful deal once you still embrace that. No matter what comes my way today, I get to choose my response, my attitude, and how I'm going to attack it, and how I'm going to chase my goals. So that's what we're implementing, okay? That's what we're going to look like. We're not there yet. Okay, but we're running towards it as fast as you can run at anything. Uh, look, I'm Mississippi through and through, and, and I'm proud of that. 
Okay. So like I said, uh, we're going to build something that, that, that you can be proud of. I, I hope that I can win a few of you over. And uh, we think we've got a chance to be competitive right away in our conference, which is Conference USA. Uh, we've got, we've got a, a, a good schedule this year. Our out-of-conference games are South Alabama, Troy, uh, Grambling, and then we play Alabama and Tuscaloosa. I've, I've heard they're doing pretty good over there right now. So we'll see how but, uh, but, but that's what we got going. So with that, I always want to open it up for some questions and let you guys shoot them at me, but I wanted to sell you on me and what I'm about and what we're building there today. So, yes, sir. I'm in on the transfer rules and changes and how to your job. Yeah, so, you know, it's it's not near as big a deal as what, like, like everything, social media makes something appear way more than what it is, right? I know everybody knows that in here. Uh, I, there's about 5,000 players in the transfer portal right now. About 4,980 of them can't play. Uh, <laughs> so, so uh, you know, and that's the truth. About 4,980 of them are in the portal. Why? Because they couldn't play where they were at. Okay? So, you know, think about it like this. For some of you, if you're at your job and you're not getting the promotion or the, or the job you want, and all of a sudden, you just packed up and tried to go somewhere else and get the job you want, where you don't even know what language they're speaking or how they're doing it, this new job. So that a lot of these kids are effectively ruining their careers because when you leave one school go to another, you got to learn a whole new language. You know what I'm saying? you got to learn how they do things, what their schemes are and all that. There, there are some that can play. We monitor it daily. It's been good to us. We've had some Mississippi kids that were at SEC schools that have gotten in and come down to us. We've taken about three, and uh, and they've been a good fit for us. Uh, we've had a few that have left, but but most of it is uh, it's not near as big a deal as what I think it'll die down over the next two years. But but the real problem right now uh, is with COVID and everybody getting a year of eligibility back. So you've got five thousand kids in a transfer pool. All right, you've got every kid that's a high school senior coming out right now. I don't know how many that is, how many that is in the world. Then you've got every junior college kid coming out in the world right now. Okay, every school gets 25 scholarships. There's 130 D1 schools. Okay, so what's that? 25, yeah, oh, oh, 3,000, a little over 3,000 scholarships available. Well, I mean, guys, so there's a bottleneck going on right now where Kids need to understand supply and demand, right? There's way more supply out there than there is demand. So uh, that, that's the real problem. Is there's a lot of really good football players that five, six years ago would have got a college scholarship, and they're not going to get one right now because there's just not enough out there for them. Yes, ma'am. I don't want you. Well, I do want you to tell you a secret. How are you able to go in – and take a program where you've got the same players, mm -hmm. you've lost all these games, and you're able to go in and turn it around. Well, most of the time when a program's losing, just like a lot of you in here taking over, you know, businesses and, and, and churches and things like that, the people aren't as bad as maybe what it seems. And uh, so at, at the other two places I was at, we had some good players. And just trying to find what we can do and quit talking about what we can't do you know, and, and take what we can do and let's start working with that. Uh, to me, it's, it's critical no matter what you're doing in life. Figure out what you can do and start doing that. And every day, try to get a little bit better. And, uh, you know, we've got some good players there. It was just two years ago. A lot of you in here probably aren't Southern Miss fans, so you don't know this. But just two years ago, we were seven and three and it just blown out UAB. And UAB's won our conference three out of the last four years. We were seven and three and just beat UAB. And then the wheels kind of fell off the Southern Miss. We ended up losing the last three games. And then we had this past year, which was bad. All right. So we're not that far removed from, from, from contending for a conference championship. And a lot of those kids are there. And uh, we got to add some more pieces. Talent wins, right? There's a reason why Alabama and Ohio State and Clemson are in the playoff every year, right? They got way better players than everybody else does. Everybody knows that, right? If you don't, they do. Trust me. Okay. All right. <laughs> I saw a graphic the other day that said Alabama had more ESPN top 300 players on their team than the first team all Pac-12 all-conference team did. All right, so talent wins. Talent matters. We've got to recruit. We've got to upgrade our talent. 
All right, we're actively doing that every day, but we also got to work with what we got. And, uh, and we got a good plan for that. Yes, sir. I saw the graphic uh, a couple days ago that came on the right board the same time. Talk about uh, how to get signed on the team. Experience. Yeah. Yeah. So Frank Gore Jr. is our running back. He was a true freshman this past year. Had a really good true freshman year. Uh, a really good football player. He's got a chance to be a great player. He looks just like his dad. Like they look just alike. He's just not as big as his dad was. Uh, Frank, but Frank's a great football player. That's probably a little bit small, you know, for some of the big boys that got overlooked. And that's what we look for in recruiting. Usually that's a question that's asked. Coach, what do you look for in recruiting? We've got a system that we call the one-strike rule, okay? We want the player that Alabama and LSU and Ohio State and all those guys want. We want the same player, but he's got one strike against him. So what I mean by that is maybe he's a six-foot-three wide receiver that has great ball skills, and can really play, but he runs a 4 6 40 instead of a 4 4. So Alabama won't take. That's our guy. Uh, he's just got one deficiency. He's got one strike. Maybe he's a running back that can really make you miss, and he's got great speed, but he's 5'7, 185 instead of 5'11, 220. He's got one strike against him. We want the guy that's got one strike, and then we want to take him. We want to use those skills that he has elite skills in. To help him be great. That's what we've done everywhere we've been. Over our six years running a D2 program, we put more people in the NFL than the University of Texas did. All right. So uh so we we've got a really good system of of locating and finding those guys, and we're excited about putting them in place. Coach, uh, do you have a core group that you brought along with you as you move from place to place? Yes, sir. So uh you know, like everybody, we, our, our D coordinator is a young guy that I brought up in the profession, Austin Armstrong. He's been in a lot of places, but he was with me at West Georgia and Louisiana Lafayette. That's what you mean, right, staff? Yeah. Uh, I had an O-line coach for 11 years named Sam Gregg. Sam, now he's at Liberty now with you freeze, but but you always have those guys that kind of understand how you want to build it. Our receivers coach and passing game coordinator is Desmond Lindsay. Desmond. Is from Taylorsville, Mississippi. Was on the national title team at Delta State and won a state title at Taylorsville. Desmond was with me for 10 years coming up through the D2 ranks. He was most recently at Arkansas State. And um, we, we, Tad Blaylock's my director of football operations. Tad is from Amory. Uh, Tad's a Southern Miss grad. He was with me at West Georgia. Uh, his dad is Keith Blaylock, who lives in Oxford now. And, uh, you know, and there's there, there's more than that. There's guys, you know, that that I think when you build a staff, you always want to start with the pillars and get those in place first, and then you want to hire around them to make sure you're uh, to make sure everybody gels the right way, right? Yes, ma'am. So we have a question online, kind of comment question from our president. He says, "You guys signed a great local kid Jack Tennant here. Do you from Oxford, mm -hmm. and kicker." Played with his son, uh, great kid. Tell us about it. Yeah, just really excited about Jack. I think Jack's been the best kicker in the state of Mississippi for at least the last two years. Uh, obviously, comes from a great family in Oxford. Mother's the mayor. Uh, Jack has kicked in really high pressurized games, two state titles in 6 A football. He's had to make it. And, and guys, y'all know Mississippi high school football, there's no more pressure than that. Somebody asked me today, they said, Man, how do you deal with the pressure? I said, guys, I played quarterback at Amory for Bobby Hall. Like, there ain't nothing. Like, hey, there's nothing. And I mean this. I mean this with everything I got. There, I, I have not been a part of any pressurized situation that was harder than being a 16-year-old quarterback at Amory, Mississippi. Nothing. Nothing even comes close to that. Okay? So, I say that all to say Jack has kicked at Oxford High School Won a state title, and they made it to the state title this year. So he comes in as a guy that's battle-tested, really talented, and comes from a good family. And that's what we're trying to sign. We're trying to sign really good Mississippi local kids that have played really good football and understand what it means to do that. So we're excited about him. Yes, sir. Anybody, if you're talking about colleges in general, if, if a player comes in, let's say uh, – his career as a sophomore, does he still get two years more? Can he get two two more years of scholarship? I mean, even though by injury, 
You mean if it ends as in, by yes. injury? Yeah. Yes, sir. Now that that is that is by the discretion of the school, but at Southern Miss we would honor that. Yes, sir. Yeah. If if he was a great kid doing what he was supposed to in the classroom, representing our university the right way, and he had a debilitating injury, then he would be what's called medical disqualified, and his scholarship would be honored, and he would just help the football <laughs> program for the remainder of his two years through being a manager or filming some practice things like that. Yes, sir. Yep. All right, so it's completely restricted. We're down to zero. We haven't been able to do anything since all COVID started, but June 1st, we're back. Thank you, Jesus. Okay. All right. So uh, we, we, we literally can't do anything. Like if Ty Harden was here today, he's the head coach of Tupelo. I couldn't go sit at his table. I couldn't talk to him. You know what I mean? And if, if anybody took a picture of me and him standing by each other, I wouldn't have been recruiting by two blow for two years. Okay, so uh, it, it's they're, they're on it, and it's just the way it is. But June 1st, we're back to normal. Our, our recruiting calendar is going to open. So on June 1st, we would be in the period, just like normal June 1st, a kid could come to our campus and see us. We could call him and talk to him, but we can't go off campus to see him starting June 1st. So we got camps. And everything we can call and text and tweet, do all that as much as we want right now. But I cannot go off campus and see anybody, and they can't come see me. I think that's positively affected Southern Miss, to be honest with you. Now, y'all know by, I'm a positive guy, I try to find the positive, but we got good players all around us, right? Somebody said today, Coach, how's COVID affecting your crew? I think it's helped us in Southern Miss. We got good players all around us. Well, y'all know Mississippi kids. They ain't going far away from home unless they go and see it and feel comfortable. If I was the head coach at Idaho right now, I'd probably think COVID really hurt. Me. You know what I mean? But, but being in Hattiesburg, Mississippi, with a lot of good players all around and can't go visit other places, I think it's been a positive for us. I really do. Yes. NIL is overrated. Uh, I think it's overrated. Uh, no, I think that's real. I think it's coming and it's here to stay. And, and I don't have a lot of answers for you. So what he's talking about is uh, name, image, and likeness. Kids been able to make money on the side. I, only thing I'll say is this. I think uh, I'm for everybody making the most out of their opportunities, whether it's y'all or my players or whatever. There's a way you can make money for yourself without pushing others down and harming others. Go for it. Uh, the legislation to, uh, to monitor it and police it is going to be astronomical. Okay, so they got to get all that in place for it. The only thing I want to say is this I don't want to undermine, and, and again, I'm for kids. If they make money, do it. I'm all for it. But I don't want to undervalue getting a college degree for free. Okay, these kids on full scholarship get everything paid for, they get unlimited meals, unlimited gear. Okay, so that, you know, there is a lot that comes with it. All right, our kids on a daily basis get fed a cooked breakfast, a cooked lunch, and they have an unlimited meal plan in the cafeteria. They also have unlimited snacks every day they can come and grab and go all day long. Okay, they get unlimited gear, and every class is paid for, every tutor's paid for, every book's paid for. If they need more help, that's paid for. All right, so being a D1 college football player is a pretty good deal in of itself. Now, we're all making a lot more money, right? I'm making more money I ever thought I would make. All right, thank God for it. And if these kids can get, get a little bit more, I'm all for it too. Yes, sir. Most of the kids in football now live off campus. Mm -hmm. Some guys make rent for them. Yeah, we require them to live. It, that, that's a school slash football coaches, uh, how he wants to run it. What we do at Southern Miss, I can speak on that, is I make all newcomers live on campus for a year. I think it's good to be a part of the college experience. And they live in amongst all the normal, regular students, not just athletes. And then after a year, if they're doing well in school, I, I tell them, I tell them when I recruit them, if your parents say you can move off, and you want to move off, and I agree that you're ready to move off, and we'll let you move off. And all three of us got to be in agreement. It's two out of three, you're staying up. Uh, it's got to be three for three. That's the way we do that. Once they move off, yes, their scholarship kicks in with an off-campus check to help to pay their rent. I appreciate it, guys. Thanks so much. Coach, thank you for being here today.